Hello, Lee Veris here, and welcome to my Burning Man adventure. I hope to be able to give you a little taste of what Burning Man is like in pictures and video. So here we go. Uh, first of all, the arrival. Um, Burning Man is held out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, when you approach the entrance, which is about 80 miles from the nearest uh, nearest sign of civilization. Uh, you, this is what you see. You see sort of a cloud of dust. And as we turn onto the driveway into the event, um, you experience lots of dust. And this is something you're just going to have to get used to at Burning Man because that's the nature of the beast. Uh, eventually, after the dust clears, you realize that you are in Oh, about an eight-lane uh, highway that is on the dirt road entering Burning Man. It's stop and go. This was about a five-hour wait to get to the gate to get in. Um, but it's pretty interesting. Uh, people are very mellow, and they get out of their cars and visit with their neighbors, and uh, you realize that you are not in Kansas anymore when, in the car next to you, a completely naked woman gets out and um, adjusts her hair. Uh, anyway, this was all part of the experience, and as we get past the gate, you're, you're presented with these signs, which are giving you kind of uh, philosophical quotes to help prepare you for the experience ahead. And, uh, yes, by the time you get in, the car is covered with puddles of playa dust. This is about the consistency of talcum powder, and it covers everything. This is uh, sort of the puddles of dust on my windshield uh, from the outside looking in onto my dash. Here's the Technopod itself, my little tiny teardrop trailer. And I am uh, parked underneath it. Uh, a shade structure. This was uh, the camp that I was uh, camping with was uh, a group of full-time RV people and uh, we built a sort of communal shade structure here. Very important to get uh, as much shade as possible. Here it is, Camp Nomadia. And you can see uh, part of the shade structure is just sort of cobbled together here and some of the trailers in the background. This is an aerial photograph of Burning Man, the actual city. The clear area in the middle uh, around which all the campers are parked, that, uh, that circular area is about a mile across. And uh, the whole area itself is quite extensive. It extends off to the uh, upper right corner of this photo. The little yellow uh, or orange dot is where Camp Nomadia was situated. Here's a view of center camp. Um, there was always a lot of activity going on here and this sort of strange kind of bodywork uh, dancing thing that was going on um, uh, sort of continuously happening in the center here. Um, but this is where you could buy coffee in the morning, one of the few things that you could purchase at Burning Man. The other thing you could purchase was ice. And uh, people would get in a long line to get ready to buy ice, and uh, you could buy ice pretty much all day. Uh, here's a view of the line, and uh, you can uh, see if you can spot all the naked people in the line here. Um, Actually, the line moved quite fast. They were very efficient. Uh, it cost about $3 for a 7-pound bag of ice that was shipped in from Sacramento. They didn't have enough ice in Reno, which was the nearest big town. 50,000 people here at Burning Man. And uh, one of the reasons to come to Burning Man is to experience the artwork. So when you're leaving the center camp area, there is this portal. This is kind of a replica of the Stargate portal. And uh, once you 
you go past this area, you are into the uh, open playa area where all the artwork is. So you pass through the portal, and then you are in uh, open playa, and you're first greeted by the man. The man is the uh, sort of effigy that they burn at Burning Man, and where the where the event gets its name. And he's erected every year and burned to the ground every year. And you can see uh, a little bit of the scale. We're gonna we're gonna take a better look at Burning Man later on, but this is the first artwork that you're really kind of presented with once you get past that portal. And the whole area is very large and dotted with artwork, which you can kind of see way off in the horizon here. There's a few pieces. Uh, um, and a gentleman on a bicycle. Bicycles are very necessary to traverse the great distances at Burning Man. And uh, the artwork is assembled in the desert. This is a tower that you could climb up. Um, and the other thing you are constantly exposed to is the dust. There's plenty of dust storms going on. Lots of wind. And uh, the artwork's quite quite interesting. I mean, it's really well produced. This is not just, you know, amateur hour here. These are quite extensive constructions. And um, all kinds of different styles going on here. This sculpture uh, was what was part of what was called the regional burn. So there are a number of sculptures which were intended to be burned down. And they were assembled in a circle around the man. And this one, I forget which state uh, kind of donated this. Um, most of the states in the Union are represented by sculptures. And Los Angeles had one that was a, uh, a lunch truck, which you can see directly behind this curious lizard vehicle. Uh, another feature of Burning Man are the many... Uh, Officially, they call them mutant vehicles. These are often referred to as art cars. And uh, they ferry people around uh, in Burning Man. They're the only things motorized that are allowed to drive around. Um, and uh, more sculptures. I think this one is from New Mexico. Again, this one was intended to be burned to the ground, so it's all made out of wood. And uh, back to camp now. Uh, just get a little more experience of what it was like to be camped at Burning Man. My camp was mostly RVers here, and so we see the RV and a little uh, monkey hut, they call them, these sort of um, uh, makeshift Quonset-type structures, uh, which is a shade stretched over um, PVC tubing. And uh, across the street... Uh, more RVs. There are more RVs than tents at Burning Man for a very good reason. And uh, our neighbors over there on the bus were kind of constantly playing rock and sort of bad rock and roll music. Um, but they were having a great time, and amazingly, they were out in the sun almost all the time. And here is from the back of uh, my camp. You can see the trailers and RVs that were that were parked together. And, you know, there's a, there's a fair amount of space. It's not like you're crowded together. You can, you can always find place to camp. Here we're coming up on the communal shade structure. You can see the rear end of my Technopod and that little uh, sort of tent in the foreground. There is my stand-up changing room and shower. You can see my solar panels there, which were keeping the battery of the Technopod charged. Here's uh, part of our motley crew here, assembled in uh, kind of a panorama stitched up together uh, from multiple shots here. Um, this is where we spent most of the time when we were at camp, in the shade. Some of our campers. This is uh, Cherie, one of the founding members of Camp Nomadia, and her, uh, her partner here, Chris, who was just in the 5K... Uh, run uh, that they held at Burning Man. He's still wearing his number. I brought a Hong drum, which was quite popular. Everybody wanted to 
to play it, and uh, it made the rounds. Uh, everybody really enjoyed it. And it was the one thing that really could withstand the rigors of the Burning Man environment. The camp held a workshop for uh, people that were interested in nomadic living, and uh, they were explaining the ins and outs and how to become a full-time nomad and all the different ways that you could be a nomad. It was attended by a fairly good little crowd here. There are lots of events uh, that are produced by the people that attend Burning Man, and you can always find out about things in the booklet, uh, the camp booklet, or on the camp radio, which is broadcasting continuously. Here they are, and uh, Chris and Cherie wearing their best Burning Man garb, um, all dressed up for the occasion. And that's Ben Wilmore on the right there with the, with the beer. Uh, our camp, it's at dusk. Um, you can, you know, the, the playa has its own kind of beauty. And uh, really sort of, this was the magic hour, dusk and sunrise. So you, were, you really wanted to experience both of those things to get the full uh, experience of Burning Man. And here are our uh, rock and roll neighbors. These these fellows were from uh, Australia. And uh, though none of them had even been born when the 60s arrived, they were desperately trying to recreate the 60s in their, their painted bus. And uh, they were pretty funny, good-natured fellows, and probably the worst rock and roll musicians I ever heard. But, you know, it was all good fun, so nobody minded. They even drew a crowd of, uh, of onlookers who appreciated the, the effort. And then the, one of the primary experiences at, at Burning Man is nighttime. And that's when it really comes alive. And, uh, and everybody gets their freak on, you know. So uh, seeing men in women's garb is... is very common experience, as is the uh, glowing uh, body attire here. And at night, you wanted to be lit up, because there are no other lights than what you provide, and so we would get out on our bicycles and uh, arrange to have all manner of glowy things so that you could kind of be seen and people wouldn't run into you, and get out at night. And... Um, there's a lot of fire at Burning Man. It's one of the themes, people playing with fire. We'll see some more of that a little bit later. Also, the art cars. As I mentioned before, there are all kinds of art cars, and mostly they get out at night. And here's our Cheshire Cat car. Um, the regional burn happened uh, early on, and uh, these were the sculptures that were set on fire. Um, different different sculptures represented different states, or in some cases, different countries also brought things uh, to Burning Man. This is the uh, the lunch truck that was the Los Angeles entry in the regional burn, and uh, I've got a little bit of video here. We'll go. There we go. You can see all the burns around all happening in a circle around the man and here I'm going to walk up to the uh, to the lunch truck here get a little closer Of course, everybody had to take pictures. Um, this is another one of the most common activities you see, everybody with a camera in their hand. And uh, some are members of our group here, exchanging loving glances. 
Everybody acts out just a little bit because, hey, it's Burning Man. It's kind of like a, a combination of uh, Alice in Wonderman, Wonderland, uh, Las Vegas, and Mad Max. Uh, just a crazy uh, creative experience. And wandering around at night, uh, this is kind of the feel. You know, uh, you see lots of art cars, all blaring techno music, which I'm going to spare you the experience of listening to here. There's the Trojan horse. We'll see a little bit of that later on. And, um, yeah, it's like a big party at night. And everything's lit up. All kinds of creative um, art cars. This one's like a little house. On the other side of this is the front porch, and this is the inside. And it's just kind of driving around. They would pick up people, and everyone would hang out in the little house. I'm not exactly sure what this car is, but it did drive people around. Um, there were lots of boat vehicles. This... Uh, this was a boat vehicle uh, that that you can see all the people. It's also blaring techno dance music. Um, a lot of the camps are these elaborate structures. That uh, the camp is sort of a disco theme right now. There's not anything going on in it, but um, lots and lots of these things around. It. Very elaborate structures everywhere, and um, they all had some something to to share. Um, this one had a sign. I'm not really sure what Reverbia is, but it was some kind of a disco experience. Another disco type thing with a live drum set there. Um, sometimes it took several days for these things to be assembled and get going. Uh, so uh, this one wasn't quite going yet. More art cars everywhere. You see all kinds of crazy things. And fire. Uh, many of the art cars incorporate fire in, in some kind of propane-driven flamethrowers. This one's a dragon, and here we have a kind of steampunky-like thing. Um, this was incredible. You could really feel the heat of the flames on your face as they exploded here. Uh, another crazy vehicle. There, There is just no end to the creative, crazy expressions that these art vehicles are. This one was a kind of a pirate ship that sort of blinked. It went from this green to this red. Um, pretty amazing. And this one, uh, you could hang bicycles on it. It had some swings on it. People were swinging and they'd hang their bicycles up. So uh, you could travel with the art car if you could convince them to pick you up. Um, it's sort of like a traveling disco, blaring uh, techno music. and Very common, uh, the techno music was everywhere. And uh, now let's look at what I like to call art and architecture, because some of the art installations were very architectural. This artist had assembled these little kind of meditation chambers um, that were all kind of put together without nails or screws. This was sort of assembled with these interlocking wooden locking pieces. Fascinating. It was very rigid. And uh, little seats built into it here. Another one uh, right next to it a little bit smaller. Um, very interesting. This is this is what I look like. This is my garb. Um, the weather is extremely dry and dusty, as has been mentioned. And uh, I just figured, you know, I would dress like the desert nomads in the Sahara. And it turned out that this was uh, really kind of the ideal... Um, garment to wear. It was light, it protected me from the sun, and I could pull the cloth uh, the, from the head covering around my mouth, put the goggles on, and I was good for the dust storms. A little shot of the, the ceiling of that structure. And 
another very elaborate sculpture. This is kind of a, I don't know, a wheel of fortune type thing that, that spectators could interact with and pull little levers and, you know, the thing could, could make it rotate. Um, really kind of interesting. Very elaborate. And uh, some of these were uh, were not burned. Obviously, this is a bit much to burn down. It has a lot of metal in it. And it was disassembled and carted off at the end of the event. Here's a kind of cubist forest here. These are metal, uh, heavy-duty metal structures. And uh, with this kind of pyramid climbing wall in the middle here. A lot of the Burning Man art installations are meant to be interacted with. Um, you can see a little bit of the temple in the background there. Here's another view of the climbing wall. You could go inside some of these things. I mean, it was, it was fascinating. Um, this sculpture uh, seems to exist primarily for people to take pictures of it. And there was always a crowd of people waiting to get their picture taken with the love. This was kind of an interesting uh, uh, installation. That this, these sort of blocks were assembled, all different sizes, um, scattered across the landscape. And it, it wasn't really clear what was the meaning of it, other than it was kind of cool, until you stumble on the one place where you can sit and look at it, at it and it forms a message. He's telling us that he made this for mankind. Um, you can imagine the A way, way, way back there is taller than a person. And this little N in the foreground here is probably uh, five inches square. This was another popular sculpture. It's very... Uh, rigid and just invited people to climb up on it and so of course you know these people have to get to the top here and uh, it was a quite a good view you can see the dust is picking up uh, something that you have to be prepared for is playa dust so here's a short little video that kind of shows you what what the playa dust experience is you could be anywhere at any time and this dust storm would would blow up and you know it could get it bad enough that you couldn't really see your hand in front of your face I was told that this year the, my first year at Burning Man was quite mild they didn't have um, any really serious dust storms but you still had to be prepared nevertheless and you also had to be prepared to protect your camera equipment and this is what I did I got this little it's sold as a kind of rain sleeve and uh, you cinch it around your camera uh, there's a, there is literally an arm sleeve for your hand to come through so you can operate the camera and here you can see how it cinches around the lens um, you have to leave the front element of the lens exposed so you can get a clear shot but I of course had a filter on the lens to protect it uh, I kept the camera in this thing the whole time and the other thing you want to make sure you do is just leave the lens on the camera. Don't take your interchangeable lenses on and off. You're just inviting trouble. Uh, so I left that one 24 to 70 lens on the camera all the time. Here's a pretty interesting sculpture, and that's kind of what you would see uh, during a dust storm. It would just barely be discernible from the distance, and as you get closer or when the dust subsided, then you could get a nice clear view of it. And uh, this was this was kind of an interesting one. Uh, all these white umbrellas, and the strings hanging down uh, lit up at night. And I unfortunately don't have a photograph of it lit up, but it was still a pretty interesting shade structure. You could get under here and just kind of chill in the in the hot sun. And what is a city without a sewer? Uh, one artist decided that Burning Man uh, really needed a sewer system, so he's got the Black Rock City sewer cap here. Uh, just <laughs> kind of just laid on the ground, of course. There's no real sewer there. 
that's looking back to the man way back there in the horizon. Uh, like I said, artwork everywhere. I think I only saw maybe one eighth of what was available. There's a, just a tremendous amount of stuff. Uh, and some of the artwork is in the camps. This, I have no idea what this is. It's some kind of a themed camp, and they have these blow up <laughs> crazy uh, sculptures here. This camp was built around this theme car. So um, it's you know looks similar to the car in the way in, in its theme. They probably played disco and music here as well. You can see the speakers there next to the car. I love this one. It was kind of a a riff on the Pakistani taxis. Very very decorated, and you can get up on the this platform on top here. It's very elaborate. Some of the sculpture moved. Um, this sculpture was sitting here and just kind of constantly rotating with the wind. Uh, very pretty. The Trojan Horse. Um, this sculpture was lit up at night with neon in, in the sort of gaps between the, the triangular pieces in the sculpture. And then they, they uh, burned it down uh, at one point during the event. Uh, all kinds of theme camps. This was some kind of South Sea uh, Island theme camp. Uh, seemed like everybody was gone at, at, when I came by here. Uh, but there were plenty of people at the Black Rock uh, Roller Disco. So uh, you can imagine, any anything you can imagine is at Burning Man in one way or another. This is for all those skating enthusiasts. They play disco music and you roller skate it. Um, here's a sculpture that had a space for a person to sit down and join the meditation group. It's kind of cool. And it was next to this teepee. Sort of a Native American spiritual thing going on here. The ever-present art cars. I love this kind of pirate bus here. Um, mostly you saw these more at night, but they did travel around during the day. They're kind of Japanese uh, gateway structure here with the with the temple in the background. These are all very nicely executed, and of course, you know, what is a city without a cemetery? So, of course, there's a Burning Man, Black Rock City Cemetery, and uh, each tombstone represents a year that, that Burning Man occurred, and I think the first one was 1989. Um, way out towards the end of the playa, the, uh, they, they fence off uh, the the area where you can't go beyond it. And this is very close to the fence. It's a movie theater, an actual movie theater inside. It's pitch black. Uh, and they had folding um, theater seats, and they were showing a movie. And they would screen movies at 12 midnight, 2 a.m., and 4 a.m. Kind of art movies. Um, very cool. Here's Fractal Nation. Um, this camp seemed to be assembled or themed around artwork. And uh, there was a sculpture right across the street from it here. And inside a, a big dome, there was all kinds of activities and a gallery. Uh, the artist that made the ticket for Burning Man had I was uh, displaying his work here inside this big dome as well as some other artists. Um, quite good. Uh, very uh, much in that kind of psychedelic, new age, kind of mind-expanding thing. And there's the there's the ticket. Um, and it was foil-stamped. I mean, this thing was an elaborate production. You know, it wasn't just your typical black on white background ticket. This this was a piece of art, which is a good souvenir.
You could also talk to God while you're at Burning Man. There's a phone here set up. Um, and actually, the phone rings in, in a camp that's not too far away, and whoever happens to be in the camp uh, answers the phone. So they, there's somebody around to answer the phone at any time during the day, and, and people would. They would call God and talk to God, and spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes, you know, in a therapy session, you know, telling them, you know, their their biggest secrets and wishes for the future and asking for advice. And, you know, I saw people here lining up to talk to God. It was really hilarious. There's kind of a replica of the Thunderdome here, uh, which they called the Death Guild. And they have these bungee uh, harnesses and really recreate that scene from the Mad Max movie where people are doing combat inside this this dome. And people, just like in the movie, they, they cr crawled up around the outside of this to get a better view. And this thing at night was covered with people. Um, and there'd be this, this kind of contest with foam-padded batons in the middle with guys jumping around. And it was pretty funny. Now we come to the man... Uh, the the main event, as it were, is the Burning Man, who this year was assembled in a kind of walking position. It's the first time they did it that way. And uh, he's lit up at night. He's got all neon and these flame uh, torches kind of around him. Um, the kind of base structure you can actually walk up into... Um, When they get ready to burn the man, it becomes this huge party and all these art cars crowd around and they start blaring the techno music and it, it got to be a bit much for me, so I backed off. And um, when they get ready to burn him, they raise his hands and so his arms are outstretched like this. And um, then they start a uh, fireworks display. This is very elaborate fireworks just amazing you know just goes on and on and on and they finally light the man on fire and uh, he starts to burn and there's more fireworks and loud pounding techno music and uh, it just keeps building and building to a frenzy and uh, eventually the the base structure kind of ignites and engulfs the man in flames and and then uh, he's kind of burning away. Uh, he burns down. Uh, the base structure, you know, goes up in flames and shoots all the smoke up into the sky. And all the while, a child, crowd is cheering. And, you know, there's loud techno music. And, you know, it's just crazy, you know, dancing and people jumping around. And the man finally burns down and his arms start to fall. And kind of when he finally collapses, it kind of goes up in a big ball of flame and then uh, you know the party continues for the rest of the night um, and it's sort of like you know this movable Las Vegas with all the lights and just crowds of people and just really really intense kind of uh, bacchanal kind of atmosphere and the next day people go out to the site and they collect the ashes from the man. This is one of the primary kind of souvenirs that you you take. You go with your little bottle or a little box or something, you collect some ashes to take with you. They clean all this up. Um, so by the following day, uh, it's, you know, it's all cleaned up. But they, uh, they allow it for one day so people can uh, pick up the ashes. You can see the temple in the background. And now we come to the the big finale. Here is the temple. Uh, the temple is the most amazing structure. This is built on the playa, assembled ahead of time. So when you arrive at Burning Man, this is already up. But people work long and hard on this, and the scale of this thing was amazing. This temple is made all out of wood, and you can get an idea of the scale of this here. Um, people can walk into it and up into the second floor. And, you know, 
it's just this amazing thing. The, uh, the center part here, and you walk inside, um, you can see on the walls these little little gongs and chimes and bells, and that's really a whole gamelan orchestra. And people are sitting in the center here listening to this music that's enveloping them. Here you can see some of the uh, some of the gongs are arranged with these little mechanical electromechanical mallets that are computer controlled. So there's a program playing this music that's assembled on the walls up to the second floor of the temple. And so this sound kind of surrounds you and envelops you. And many people would, would spend hours in here. This is looking up towards the top of the, of the structure from the, from the, in the center cathedral area. And here everyone is, is uh, sitting, meditating, experiencing the music. It was a very spiritual uh, place. And you couldn't help but be moved uh, by when you walked in here. You just felt the energy and the vibes. This is what I look like, of course. And I'm uh, standing on the second uh, floor here of the cathedral. People would write on the walls. Uh, every uh, reachable surface of the temple ended up with some kind of message written. Uh, sometimes people would put photos uh, as kind of a memorial for people that had passed. They uh, had little wishes uh, or apologies or all kinds of messages that were placed on the temple and the idea being that when the temple burned the messages would be released into the ether to manifest uh, or do their magic. Here looking from the second story of the temple back towards the man who's in the very center at the horizon there gives you the idea of some of the distances involved. Um, Good shot of the temple and the and the playa surface, which is this sort of cracked mud. This was all a dry lake bed, um, and uh, I guess the site for some atomic testing. So actually, the dust is mildly radioactive. Um, here at this point, uh, the temple is now um, being the the musical instruments are being removed and it's sort of being prepped for the burn. Um, so no, they're not allowing uh, anyone but workers. They're, they come and bring uh, scrap wood and pile it up inside uh, so that when it ignites there's even more material to burn. Uh, before they burned the temple they did a concert. Um, this artist had assembled this thing he called the earth harp and apparently he's done this throughout the world, um, all over the world. And this is the first time he did this at Burning Man. But there's kind of this r rugged, uh, rigid bridge structure here that is right behind him that these 200-foot-long steel cables are tied into this. And there's electric pickups in it. Uh, but the whole temple is actually... Uh, has these cables attached to it and the whole temple vibrates when you pluck or you know in this case he's sort of stroking the strings and uh, a woman came out when the sun went down to play this instrument and I have a little bit of video here you can hear it
Here's what the temple looked like at night. You could go out there at night. It was uh, another experience. Well worth it. Just gorgeous. Uh, attention to detail. Everything. The lighting was wonderful on this thing. And here uh, we are getting prepped for the big burn. At the, the last day of Burning Man, they burn the temple down. And uh, it's, it's quite a different experience than the burning of the man. This is much more somber. Everyone is quiet. They all sit down, a uh, big crowd of people around the temple um, at an established radius. They have, uh, they have sort of fire marshals and, and people guarding uh, the perimeter. And then they start setting it on fire. And... Um, you watch as the temple is literally engulfed in flames and it slowly burns to the ground. Um, this gentleman sitting down in the foreground is looking out at the audience. There are people um, whose mission is to sort of keep track of the crazies in the audience who might you know, jump up and run towards the flames. Um, it is hot. You can feel the heat at this distance. You really wouldn't want to get too much closer. And eventually, eventually it burns to the ground. Um, and at some point when the flames get low enough, they allow the, the assembled crowd to move forward and approach the flames. And it's, it's sort of a ritual to, walk in a circle around the flames and some people throw additional messages into the into the fires and you can see people get very emotional about um, about the experience and now we're getting ready to say goodbye and I'm going to say goodbye to my compatriots here in the Camp Nomadia and uh, with their rigs that was Chris and Cherie before this is Sarge. People have uh, playa names. And this is the Sergeant Awesome, who was a key member of our group. Um, Toby and his wife. Uh, you know, I can't remember everybody's name. Here's me and my little technopod. Yes, I was the, uh, the Arab nomad the whole time. Lots of very uh, interesting people. And uh, just really enjoyed the experience of uh, sharing this experience with them all. And I hope to be back next year. So here, the ending of the, of the last day is our couple from Belgium. Um, really fun couple. These are just different views uh, of uh, the people and their rigs. And we had kind of a tornado on the last day. This was quite exciting, a big dust tornado. Um, didn't get close to our little camp, but uh, and it wasn't destructive. It was just pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Dust everywhere. This was my souvenir. My car was literally just caked in it. And, uh, you know, I drove back with all this dust. I'm still trying to clean up this dust. Here's our Motley crew giving me a good uh, Burning Man goodbye from Camp Nomadia. Well, thank you. Thank you for sitting through this. And in, uh, I hope you got a little bit of a taste of what Burning Man's all about. It's a magical place, a celebration of human creativity. And uh, I will be back. So come and catch me at Burning Man next year. See you later.